People say records are meant to be broken, but in today's video, I'm going to talk about some NBA records that I don't think will ever be broken. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. The first record I want to talk about was set all the way back on December 30th, 1990, when a player by the name of Scott Skiles, some of you might be familiar, set the NBA record for assists in a game with 30. This broke the previous record set by Kevin Porter in 1978 when he had 29 assists in a game. So the the initial record for assists in a game stood for 12 years. Now, Scott Skiles set this record, like I said, in 1990, and the closest anyone has come since then was John Stockton, literally just 16 days later, on January 15th, 1991, where he had 28 assists versus the Spurs. Now, if you want to talk about the closest someone has come to this record in the last 10 years, that would be Rajon Rondo on December 27th, 2017, where he had 25 assists in a game. Now, the interesting thing about the Rondo stat line is he only played 30 minutes and had 25 assists. When Scott Skiles had 30 assists, he played 44 minutes. So if Rondo had played 14 more minutes, he probably could have set a new NBA record, but that just did not happen. So for someone to break this record, they would have to be having the game of their lifetime. They would also have to play probably 35 minutes or more. Technically, any record could be broken, but this is one that I just don't see being broken, at least not anytime soon. The next record I want to talk about is not only one record, Record, but it's two and it happened in the same game November 9th 1989 the Seattle Supersonics facing the Milwaukee Bucks this game went to five overtimes so there were certain players that played a lot of minutes and there were two players that set two NBA records in the same game those players I'm talking about are Dale Ellis and Xavier McDaniel because they both played nearly 70 minutes Xavier McDaniel played 68 minutes which would be an NBA record if Dale Ellis didn't play 69 minutes in that exact same game so the records broken here are obviously most minutes played in an NBA game by a single player, with Dale Ellis setting the record and Xavier McDaniel being the new runner-up for that record. But this would also be the most combined minutes played by two teammates in an NBA game in history, and that's a record that I'm very confident will never be broken, because these two dudes played nearly 70 minutes apiece. They played 137 minutes total for two teammates to do that in the same game. I think I can safely say that will never happen again. Now this next record I didn't even know existed until I started doing research for this video. I mean, I knew some team had to have this record, but by this amount of points, it's it's pretty depressing. I'm talking about the 1950 Minneapolis Lakers and their record for the least amount of points scored in an NBA game, when in 1950, they scored 18 points in a game versus the four. Fort Wayne Pistons, who also set a record for the least amount of points scored in a game to win when they scored 19 points in that game. Yes, we are talking about two NBA teams playing a regulation game of basketball and scoring a total of 37 points where one team beat the other team 19 to 18. Now, you might be wondering how this is even possible, and the reason was before 1954, there was no such thing as a shot clock. So, teams could hold the ball as long as they wanted and be as patient as they wanted, which led to some incredibly low scoring games, none quite to this magnitude, but regardless, it led to some really low scoring games and some really boring basketball where teams would just hold the ball the entire time. It was almost like a game of cat and mouse. So that's exactly what happened here. It was two teams holding the ball the entire time, being very cautious in what they did offensively, and it led to a 19 to 18 score. Now this was a a problem back in the day where teams would just hold on to the ball but literally not even close to this extent the third lowest scoring team in NBA history for a single game scored 33 points okay they didn't even score under 30 so 19 to 18 even for those times was kind of ridiculous and I can safely say very safely say that this record will never ever ever be broken moving on to the next unbreakable record it's one that I feel like I kind of have to mention so I'm not going to spend too much time on it I am talking about Will Chamberlain's 100 point game. For obvious reasons, I don't even think he did this, but regardless, if he did do this, pretty insane. No one's really gonna come close to this, I don't think. The closest anyone has gotten was obviously Kobe's 81 point game, and even then, that was absurd. So 100 points, I don't even know if it's humanly possible. I assume someone's gonna get close soon, 
but 100, who's going to touch that? Now, like I said, I was just going to quickly talk about Wilt's 100 point game. So that's all I'm going to say about that subject. I'm now going to move on to the next record, which was apparently also set by Wilt Chamberlain. I kind of forgot I had this one on the list, but it's when Wilt Chamberlain shot 63 shots in his 100 point game. Another record that is completely absurd, and I question if it's even real. Wilt Chamberlain definitely could have scored 100 in a game. He had the talent, but 100 points, 63 shot attempts. Now the 63 shot attempts, I don't question quite as much as the 100 points, but regardless, neither of those records are going to be broken ever, 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 ever. They are going to stand the test of time for eternity, unless the NBA like dramatically changes in the future. This next record was set by one team and it is the most NBA championships won in a row. You've heard of three peats, you heard of going back to back, but have you heard of winning eight championships in a row? I mean, the dominance that the Boston Celtics had in the 1960s really needs to be studied because their teams were completely unfair. I mean, it was, they were playing like an entirely different game than everybody else. Think back to the Warriors super team with KD and then imagine that for eight seasons in a row and there was nothing that anybody could do about it. I mean, this is another record that I could safely say will never ever be broken because the NBA is just way too competitive nowadays for a team to go eight for eight in eight consecutive years years for the NBA championship. I mean, going back to back is hard enough nowadays. Going for a three-peat is very hard nowadays. So winning eight in a row, that is never going to happen again. I would put a lot of money on that. Moving along, this next record is going to be incredibly difficult for anyone to break, especially in the modern NBA, when it seems like nobody wants to play. We're talking about AC Green's record for most consecutive games played. The man's nickname was Iron Man for a reason. He played 1,000 192 consecutive games. This is a record that spanned from the mid 80s all the way until 2001. And this dude literally did not miss a game. He didn't sit out a game. He didn't get injured. He played in every single game. You can go to basketball reference. You can look it up. It is true. It is real. AC Green, most consecutive games played in NBA history. I can confidently say that I don't think anyone's going to beat this to play 1100 games in a row not miss a single one that's pretty much near impossible here we go the last record of this video i'm going to talk about is held by none other than hall of famer moses malone a man who absolutely dominated pretty much everybody he played against during his time he was a really good player that's not really talked about him much for for whatever reason he's really never mentioned when you talk about all-time centers but regardless moses malone his record that he set was offensive rebounds during the course of a career where he grabbed 6,700 and 31 offensive rebounds over the course of his NBA career. Now, this is one that is also completely impossible to topple. The person in second place is Robert Parrish, who had 4,598 offensive rebounds, and he played nearly 300 more games than Moses Malone did. Dennis Rodman, one of the greatest rebounders, arguably the greatest rebounder in NBA history, has a whole 2,402 less offensive rebounds than Moses Malone had. I mean, seriously, why is it Moses Malone like ever mentioned in any capacity when people talk about the all-time great centers? This dude was an absolute beast. But that'll do it for this video. That's all of the unbreakable records I have to mention for the time being. If you enjoy this video, leave a like if you want. It helps a lot. Also, leave any comments if you disagree with any of these and you think that any of these records didn't belong on this list. Or put it in the comments if you think I excluded certain records that you would want to see in the potential part two. But that's all I got for this video. Thanks everybody for watching and until next time, see ya.